Welcome everyone. We are in the Making Tennis, a walk in the park session. Um, joining me this evening is my dear colleague, Joe Steger. He has actually been, he's celebrating his 20 year anniversary at Eastern. Um, so, it, it, you know, he definitely has a tremendous of knowledge to share. Um, he's sort of an expert in the park space and, you know, parks have been incredibly important to the Eastern section, arguably now more than ever because um, of the position we're in and of all the new players who have either come back to the sport or are playing for the first time. There are so many reasons why focusing on parks now is incredibly important for the, for the section, but we'll get into that um, over the course of the next hour. Um, I'm actually going to kick it over to, to sort of introduce the panel, give a little bit of a, of a lineup in terms of what to expect today. Um, All right, well, Monica's put a lot of pressure on me here, um, <laughs> speaking a little, a little too much. So bring the expectations down, folks, but um, it's, it's good to be with you, and it's good to be working with uh, my friend and colleague, Monica, who did a great job uh, helping me set this up. So um, we've got what I think is a great panel um, that we're gonna hear from a little bit later on. Uh, we have Kelly Bartell, who is the Recreation Supervisor for the Town of Ogden Parks and Recreation Department, which is a suburb of Rochester, which will be a theme as you'll hear in just a moment. Uh, we have Hassan Dejani, who is the President of the Austin Community Tennis Association. Uh, Michelle Skelly is the Program Director for the Town of Hamburg Department of Youth Recreation and Senior Services. She's also a UST Eastern Clinician. And uh, Tom Pinero, Director of Parks and Rec for Hilton Parma, which to keep the theme going is also a suburb of Rochester um, and a neighbor of Ogden actually. So uh, we're very excited to have everyone um, on and the panel is gonna speak in the second half of the presentation. Uh, prior to that, Monica and I are gonna share some information uh, and resources and uh, the benefits of tennis. But before Monica and I start, Tom is actually, uh, playing a dual role um, today. So Tom is also the Vice President of Programs and Services for the New York State Recreation and Park Society. And we wanna highlight NWSRPS uh, in this session. They are a partner of ours and I've had the privilege of being the staff liaison to NWSRPS for the past 10 or more years. So um, I work closely with Tom both in his role at Hilton Parma, but also at NWSRPS and their Executive Director, Lisa Morahan, and um, we have a great relationship in our efforts to uh, collectively serve park, uh, park and rec professionals across the state. So Tom's gonna speak for a, a few minutes on what NMSRPS does. And he's also got a, an entertaining trivia question that he's gonna wrap his, uh, his part of the session up with. So Tom, thanks for outdressing me today. And uh, it's all yours, man. Thanks for being a part of this. Thank you, Joe. It's, uh, it's my pleasure to be here with you. I appreciate all of you allowing New York State Recreation and Park Society to, to be a partner as, as USTA Eastern has been such a great partner to us. So um, as Joe mentioned, I, I'm serving a couple roles today in, in my uh, my day-to-day. -day. I'm the Director of Parks and Recreation for the Town of Parma and Hilton Parma Parks and Recreation. And in a volunteer capacity, I serve the New York State Recreation and Park Society as the Vice President of Programs and Services. So just a little background on NYSRPS. We serve over 630 members statewide that consist of parks and rec professionals, commercial members, retirees, uh, and students. So a, a wide range of, of people who do what we do and work in the profession of parks and rec. Um, our mission is to, to basically be the principal organization that enhances the value of parks and recreation. So, uh, you know, we, we, we try to be that for our members and we try to, to engage, help our members engage citizens as well. Some of our core services um, involved that we, we try to focus on is prof professional development, our membership development and services, public policy development, public awareness and resource development. And our goals for the year set by our, our 2021 president are, as you can see here, uh, to really help our members and support them through this crisis that we've been all in. Um, not unlike a lot of you, we're dealing with a lot of challenges. And so, you know, I think we all have needed the support and it's great to have a network like we do at NYSRPS to kind of help everybody along. Um, and again, uh, advance those core services that I just mentioned before and, and further strengthen our relationships with partners such as USTA, another uh, very big 
initiative that we're going forward with is our development of our diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives. And we're, uh, we're excited to have some more on that front coming up soon. As far as our partnership with USTA, we, we've, um, you know, I think we've, we've got a really good partnership and we do a lot together. Um, so in addition to USDA being one of our business partners, which, uh, which again, that includes them on a lot of, of our initiatives, uh, they are here always at our events, just like we're here today. So um, all of our conferences and workshops, USDA is one of the first to be front and center, um, willing to do really whatever we, uh, we, we, we need them to, you know, and it's been a great, great partnership in that sense. Um, in addition to being, you know, kind of exhibitors and workshop providers, many of our members have benefited uh, including my own organization, and I believe Kelly's, um, from grant opportunities in, in different ways that USTA is able to help organizations in the park and rec field. Um, and then um, a lot of our members work with USTA, and I, and I do want to mention here, I know I, I included something that, that I'm sure Joe was humble enough to leave off the, the slide, but most recently in 2020, uh, Joe and, and USTA Eastern was recognized as the Genesee Valley Recreation and Parks Society uh, sponsor and partner of the year. So uh, that's a little bit of a testament of how great it is to work with these, these um, individuals. Um, I can give you some background, but you know, Wegmans, if anybody's familiar with Wegmans, that's a former corporate sponsor of the year of ours. So to put it in perspective for you, Wegmans is pretty big. And so for USTA and, and Joe to be named in that, um, in that, that line, I think it's impressive and we're really fortunate to have them as a partner. So I believe now we're gonna have a little bit of fun before we kick it back over to, to Joe. And we're gonna have a little trivia question. And, and what, uh, what the winner of this trivia question is going to receive is uh, we, we have a virtual conference ourselves coming up in April, the New York State Recreation and Park Society. So uh, if anybody's interested in, in learning a little bit more about what we do, um, the winner will be allowed to have a free registration to the conference and a $25 gift card to Amazon, courtesy of New York State and Genesee Valley. So a little bit at stake here. I think the, the, the way that we are looking to run this is that you would all use your, your chat option. Um, and maybe Monica and Joe, if you can correct me if I'm wrong, but we're going to ask this question and then we're, we're going to obviously use a timestamp for picking the correct answer. We're looking for you to put your full name and your answer in the chat. Um, am I missing something there, Monica? Or, That's right. Or yeah, no, you're 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 perfect. So, uh, if you would um, put in your your first and last name, your get um, the answer for the question, the first right winner. Um, I'm going to just ask to email me directly, and my email is lamura at eastern.usta.com. I'm going to put that in the chat, um, and then we will be able to mail you. Your prize. So with that said, if you want to kick off the trauma and I'll, I'll monitor the chat. Can everyone see where the chat function is on, on screen to utilize? Okay. Looks like you're ready to go. Next all right. So you could all see it on the screen. What uh, what tennis icon made a cameo appearance in the 2002 Adam Sandler film, Mr. Deeds? Uh, this icon happens to operate a tennis academy in New York City. I, I at least see one correct answer that have come in. So uh, it looks like some people are familiar with the movie and the the, uh, the famous tennis icon. Yeah, I think the answer came in before Tom even finished the question. I'm sure. <laughs> Ironically, uh, my wife and I have a, a newborn and we were looking for something to just kind of relax to and go to sleep to. And, and for some reason, Mr. Deeds made the list last night. So. <laughs> That's the great thing about our relationship with NYS RPS. Tom also makes uh, recommendations on movies and, uh, and other great things to do, not just, uh, not just park and rec or tennis related. Cool, are we, uh, we have a winner, Monica? We have a winner, Andrew Weiss. So if you would, Andrew, just shoot me out with your with your home address, and we'll get your um, your giveaway shipped out. Awesome, uh, thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. Um, someone, maybe me, did uh, remove one of the bullets you had on the slide, but um, you mentioned it anyway. But it's a, it's a privilege to be able to work with you guys. 
and Tom mentioned in Genesee Valley Rec and Park Society, and that's an affiliate of NYSRPS covering Rochester and the surrounding area. And, and um, it's been great, not just working with the statewide society, but also their affiliates. We've made a ton of connections. Um, I've been able to present at a bunch of conferences and um, it's just a great group. So we really uh, value our relationship with you guys. Look forward to your virtual conference uh, coming up in April. And thank you for uh, a very generous gift that uh, I think Andrew Weiss is going to uh, appreciate. So uh, again, thanks for your participation. And Tom's going to be back a little bit later as part of the panel. Um, but I'm going to address uh, stuff right now specifically. Uh, we've got the question on the screen, why tennis? And I think uh, in some cases here, I'm probably preaching to the choir because I think uh, everybody is uh, has made the decision that, hey, tennis is uh, is a sport that we want to play. So what we want to do here is kind of share some ideas and um, some things that we can uh, kind of support park and recreation professionals um, with as they either start programs or expand their uh, existing programs. But I think uh, on that question, I think a lot of people also answered it uh, in 2020, as Monica mentioned, uh, we, we saw an increase in participation in 2020. Um, obviously with the pandemic, tennis became an even more popular sport um, thanks to the social distancing aspect of the sport, um, but also the fact that you could play with your families um, you couldn't, you know, and you can do it safely. Um, so we were thrilled to see the participation, not necessarily thrilled with the reason the participation went up, but um, that's obviously something we want to, we want to try to keep those people in the sport that have either come back to it or started playing for the first time, um, especially in the past year. But I want to give a uh, shout out to our outgoing Western Regional Council Director, Michael Stark, who uses the phrase, um, with tennis, you can keep your distance while still being social. Um, and I think that's a key as well, where you can still um, get on the court with friends, with family, you can maintain the distance, but at the same time, you can get a great workout um, and you can also interact, um, again, from a safe distance. Um, so we're gonna talk some about the, the resources we have available. We're also gonna touch on the health benefits of tennis, which we had been talking about for a long time, but obviously they came uh, more into sharp focus um, in the last 10 months or so. Uh, obviously tennis being a lifetime sport too, and with park and rec departments looking to serve as constituents of all ages, um, obviously tennis fits in very nicely there where we can offer tennis. And we're gonna hear later from Tom about their Pee Wee program. I believe kids may have been as young as three. Um, and we know that the national, USA national runs tennis tournaments for age group tournaments, 80s, 90, 90 year old uh, people can still play. So uh, <clears throat> let's, uh, we're gonna go into uh, the next slide real quick. And I think, um, I wanna give Michelle credit here first, Michelle Skelly was on our panel. Uh, she was instrumental along with uh, other USDA staff and pros from around the country in helping to change our sport um, over a decade ago and, and really focused on age appropriate equipment and making it easier for not just kids, but especially kids to have a good experience right off the bat. And we know how important it is when you try a new activity, whether you're you know five years old, 10 years old, whether you're older, whether you're my age, um, Monica mentioned I've been here for 20 years, so when I say I'm 25, you might not believe it, but I am. But regardless of the age you start at, people want to have success right off the bat. They want to have fun, and they want to be able to rally the ball because tennis is about sending the ball back and forth. So thanks to the equipment that we have available, it's a lot easier to do that. And so specifically for kids, obviously we have smaller rackets. We have the red balls, foam balls, felt balls, orange balls and balls that just aren't gonna bounce up as high. So it's easier for kids to learn the proper contact point. And again, they don't have to chase balls going over their head and trying to uh, to chase yellow balls down that are gonna bounce crazy high. Uh, also with smaller courts, they don't have to cover as much ground. And that's obviously uh, important as kids develop um, as tennis players. And I think for adults too, um, a lot of times adults will come into the sport and we'll use the modified equipment with them as well. And it's um, it works well, like I said, for people of, of any and all age. Um, and we have access to equipment, discount equipment, um, and we can certainly help out with that as well. I also wanted to mention that with the onset of the equipment, it made it a lot easier to offer programs in non-traditional spaces as well. And um, whether that be a playground, a parking lot, right, a basketball court, whether it be your driveway at home, 
right? Or maybe it's an indoor facility that isn't a dedicated tennis facility, but it's a gymnasium or a community center. Uh, I think Michelle and I could tell some stories about conferences we've gone to over the years where we've uh, delivered tennis presentations in, in some strange places, right? Hallways, um, ballrooms, uh, tennis can be played anywhere and the equipment makes that possible. Uh, it also makes it possible, I mentioned families, families can play together. I play with my kids, they, they make me look bad, uh, but we use felt balls and foam balls and it's a lot easier for us to just go out on the driveway and play. Um, USCA did put out safety guidelines right when the pandemic started um, and we're still utilizing those and updating those again to make sure people feel safe um, when they go out on the court. And uh, I think our facilities outdoor and indoor from parks to clubs have done an incredible job of making people feel comfortable uh, and working with us to communicate that. And I think Monica might speak to, uh, to some of that in just a little bit. We just, we wanna lower the barriers and make it as easy as possible for people to play. And again, the key is not just easy to play, you know, easy to get into the game, but to feel good when you do play and to feel like, hey, I, I can play tennis. Uh, you know, whether it's on a 36 foot court, whether it's, you know, two five-year-old kids passing the ball back and forth on the ground underneath a piece of net tape and not even using a net. Regardless, the idea is, again, I'm sending it to my opponent or in some cases my partner when I'm just learning how to play um, and they're sending it back. Obviously parks are an, a great setting for organized play. Um, when we saw that again last year, especially in the pandemic, um, I visited several parks that you know, if I wanted to step on the court at that time, I wouldn't have been able to because there were that many people playing. So I think um, we have some incredible park settings across um, our section. And we're going to talk specifically about a few a little bit later on. But another thing I wanted to focus on, too, is not just, again, the outdoor play, but park and rec departments and the ability to run programs throughout the year, whether, again, it's in the gymnasium or the community center, um, we can support that as well mentioned Michelle Skelly as a clinician. Um, we've kind of transitioned to virtual training more so than face-to-face -face over the last almost year. Um, hopefully we'll be able to get back to doing some face-to-face -face training very soon. Uh, but we do have a team of clinicians in addition to our staff. Um, there's also tremendous resources available, curriculum resources, videos, um, and a lot of great stuff available for state play approved providers that's all free. Um, and we're going to hear about later in the week at the conference, Jocelyn is doing a session on Friday morning about grants. Um, so we do have some financial support as well, available as well. Uh, growing tennis is obviously our number one priority and growing tennis in parks uh, is right up there as is schools too. And just a quick, quick mention about schools. We have a PE curriculum and the ability for PE teachers to get uh, free equipment when we link them to an outside provider. And a lot of times that outside provider or school partner can be a park and rec department and that can be a great place for kids after they've been introduced to tennis and PE to then the next step um, to move to a program being offered um, by a community park provider in this case a park and rec. Uh, so I want to give credit to Monica and her team they put together some incredible graphics um, over the last several months and, and we're going to see some of them right here um, speaking about the health benefits of tennis and helping to promote a lot of the great things that are going on so I'm going to hand it over to Monica. Joe. Tough. So, you know, health and wellness top of mind, um, many of us in this past year. And, you know, I, I, for one, definitely don't take for granted the fact that our job is to promote an activity that can keep us all healthier, you know, both in mentally. Um, and we're so lucky to involve so many of our partners in this conference. And Tom, for your time today. Um, another partner of ours is Mount Sinai. You'll see in the middle graphic here, we featured one of our physicians, Dr. Melissa Lieber, um, last night on a conference call with many of our league cats. We had another physician, Dr. Alexis Colvin, discuss a study that she was a co-author on. It's for, for frequent players, for league players. We're just so lucky that we can call um, this credibility and this um, you know, real thought leadership of the health and wellness um, of tennis as a sport. And again, I think that, you know, there's, there's never been a year that um, we haven't been so acutely aware of the importance of talking about um, the, the health and, and, and mental benefit of tennis overall as a sport. 
So we put together these graphics, um, as Joe had mentioned, um, you know, in April and May, really trying to hone in on the benefits um, from a health perspective, getting these in the hands of providers, of park and rec departments, um, of clubs, of tennis advocates to share in the social media channels, to get out into the public, um, to, to really underscore these benefits, to get new people playing, um, to get people who have just picked up a racket again, to just really convince them that this, was, this, this is the sport um, to, to really make sure to uh, keep your family healthy as we all sort of struggle through what was such a crazy year. Next slide. Okay, so, um, you know, and I keep coming back to last year just being so, so unusual, and we really all had to work together to figure out really what our messages could be, what's so great about tennis, and Joe, Joe spent some time talking about that. But what is it about the sport that's so wonderful, you know, in 2020 and in an evergreen capacity? And I think that, um, you know, the fact that other athletes really lean on tennis and lean on our sport last year when maybe they didn't have other access to other sports they could play. Um, it's a sport, as Joe mentioned, that allows you to naturally socially distance uh, from other, from other, from friends, from family, from, from players um, in a safe way. So we wanted to make sure that we could speak to everyone. We wanted to make sure that we were really honing in on these benefits that make tennis so great and accessible um, through trying times. You know, you can you can socially distance, of course. It's the sport for our life. It gets that heart pumping. It gets you, you know, breathing and running and, and feeling healthy and living a healthy life. Um, you know, it's a sport, again, that really engages mental skills and it's great for mental health. It can play. Um, it's free, and this is something that we talked about a lot last year, and especially important to parks. This is tennis is um, one of those sports that I think people really do sort of associate with, um, you know, a certain type of person, or it's not for me, or I can't afford it. And really, it's it's a free sport. It's open to everyone, and we're trying to make sure that people, as that, they can see them on the court um, through our materials. Um, this last banner on the right. So we know, you know, park play is up, participation is up. Um, I mean, I could not believe back in April, it just feels like so long ago now, when we finally could come out and play again, it was warm enough, it was safe enough that we, that, that towns were opening back up. And the lines, you know, outside of the high school courts, outside of the park courts. Um, so we, on Long Island specifically, started sort of, um, you know, sort of covering these parks and these banners so that when people could come out and play, they could realize that, hey, if I'm playing in a park, I can also play inside. Here's a website with park uh, with clubs offering, you know, low cost play to keep people playing when it gets cold out. So park really for a lot of in a lot of ways is an entry point for people um, to come out and play, to try tennis, to hopefully find all these reasons to stay in the game and then we want to keep them in the tennis family, find a place for them to play, find affordable options, find places for the family to play as well. Um, and Joe, I know alluded to um, tennis being a family sport. I, there were times this year when I thought I was going to lose my mind and trying to find, you know, safe and healthy options for two small kids and I had set up the pop-up tent or pop-up tent, pop-up court. I wish it was a tent. Um, in the backyard, we were out there playing. We we're out at the park playing. So I think that a lot of families are really coming back to tennis as well as, as just a great option to stay safe and to stay healthy this year. So, um, you know, to sort of encapsulate all this thought, all this thinking that Joe had mentioned um, in terms of what our, what our options are for grants, reasons to play tennis, um, partner organizations that we work with, we put together a sell sheet that can be customized for any purpose. Um, these are all these materials that we're referencing today too are available for download for anyone who wants to use them. So this is sort of our standard sell sheet. Again, we can make updates um, for any organization um, to use to, to sell in the sport of tennis and, and why it's so wonderful and such a great option. So I know Joe wanted to talk a little bit on this slide too, just specifically about Chestnut Ridge, but really quickly um, on the right here, you'll see um, an example of one of our social media ads. And, and we're really lucky on our team to have 
two incredible, incredibly talented people. Um, this particular graphic was mocked up by Kristen Semple, who's actually, I have to give her a shout out, leading the slides today. So thank you, Kristen. Um, but she's really a wizard when it comes to social media and was able to really think about, okay, well, where is tennis being offered? Where can we show tennis being played safely? Um, you know, sort of what, what can we pull into an ad that, that make it relevant and, um, and useful for, for clubs across the section? And this was a specific ad that we did for Chestnut Ridge. Um, and I'll let Joe speak a little bit more to that campaign. Sure. Thanks, Monica. Um, we, this was a park that we had identified um, the previous year. It's, it's actually not located too far from me um, outside of Buffalo. And my colleague, uh, Lynn Buffamani, who's our Western Region League Coordinator and our Adult Programs Manager, and I had, and uh, Lynn did an incredible job on this uh, park project as well. We kind of worked together and talked through some things. And we partnered with Summer Classic Events, a community tennis association led by Gordon and Tim, Gordon Panic and Tim Sands. And Gordon's actually gonna be on a, a session tomorrow. Uh, but we, we met with Erie County. So it was a partnership between Eastern Erie County um, and the Community Tennis Association. And uh, needless to say, uh, when we hit last March, it was unclear whether we, we were gonna be able to move forward with our plans, but we pushed it back um, and we were able to still go forward with just about everything we had planned. Uh, through the through summer classic events, there were youth and adult programs. There was an adult flex league, drill clinics. They offered a round robin. Um, in addition to the tournament they offer every year that typically gets anywhere from 150 to 200 participants. Uh, on the junior side, there was a 10 u program. There's also a middle high school organized play program, a team challenge, a round robin, junior circuit event. Um, so we offered a whole menu of, of program options. And the idea here was not to compete with uh, other park and rec departments who are running programs in the summer, but to offer them. In the case of the youth program, it was offered in the evening, um, so as not to compete with some of the morning programs that are run elsewhere. And the Flex League is obviously just that, it's flexible, so um, it works around the schedule of the people that wanted to play, and it was also level-based, uh, which is important. So it, this turned out to be, uh, again, it was, it was unclear if it would be, but it turned out to be uh, a great success and something we're looking to build on. And one of the keys too was we have three tremendous indoor facilities in the Buffalo area. And we wanted to connect in those players that came out of the park to those facilities. Um, and we had actually planned through summer classic events, open house events to take place at each of those clubs this past fall. Unfortunately, circumstances, uh, our numbers went up in this area and we were unable to move forward with those. But I just want to highlight, you know, the, the fact that we ideally we want to keep people playing year round if we can and promote opportunities that are happening. So again, whether it's through the park and rec or whether it's the park and rec partnering um, with a facility um, just to give people the opportunity to keep playing. Because um, obviously up here, if I look out the window right now, it's not really conducive to outdoor play. Um, I wanted to mention uh, surf tennis. So um, we're not going to get too into surf tennis, but summer classic events utilized uh, the surf tennis platform, which some of most of you probably have heard about. Um, you've probably heard about it in the context of it's going to uh, replace tennis link, and in some cases it already has. But here in the case of summer classic events, they use the programming module, which they were able to put in all of their programs. They were able to have people register through the program module. Um, if you, it's Kristen, sorry, if you want to move to the next slide, go ahead. Um, but so they had great success being also able to promote the programs. Um, once people registered initially for the 10U program, now they were in the context module. So Tim and Gordon were able to send emails targeting um, kids that were eligible to play in the team challenge and middle school, high school kids to be able to play um, in the junior circuit event. So they utilized surf tennis uh, very effectively. and. As I mentioned before, Gordon is actually going to be part of a panel tomorrow night, um, another session that Jocelyn's leading. She's leading a lot of sessions, or at least only the ones that I'm, I'm promoting, I guess. But um, Gordon is going to speak more to what they did in 2020 with surf tennis and plans for 2021 to expand it even further and, and utilize now the tournament functionality that's, uh, that's in surf tennis. So um, check that session out tomorrow. Uh, we want to transition to our panel um, right now since we kind of mentioned them at the beginning. We saw Tom. We're going to hold Tom off uh, and we're actually going to bring Kelly Bartell in first. And 
Um, I had the opportunity, I think Kelly and I, we either met at a Genesee Valley Rec and Park Society conference or a state conference. So um, another uh, successful part of our partnership was the opportunity for me to connect with Kelly, um, who was the recreation supervisor, as I mentioned before, in the town of Ogden. And um, has put a very cute picture on our slide as well. So I'm going to have um, Kelly speak about uh, what they're doing in Ogden to help uh, help grow the sport. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Monica. I'm so happy to be here. Like Joe said, my name is Kelly Bartell. I'm a recreation supervisor uh, with the town of Ogden Parks and Recreation Department. And uh, here we, uh, I, I oversee all of our programming, but um, today I'm here to touch on and talk about tennis. Um, we include tennis in a lot of existing programs that we do. Um, it's really easy, like Joe mentioned, you can incorporate tennis into any program, uh, whether it be preschool or our youth summer camps. Uh, we also have a full day uh, rec day program that occurs on remote learning days uh, that we incorporate tennis into. We're starting a partnership actually next week um, which I'll touch on in a little bit. Um, and we incorporate it into our before and after school program too. So really any program that we offer, we found it's really easy to incorporate tennis into it and the kids love it. Um, also we offer uh, standalone tennis programs such as our little rookie tennis program. Um, that's the little guy in the picture there. He's, um, he's participating in our little rookie program, which reaches three to five-year-olds. Um, and I believe Tom's going to touch on that a little bit as well. They, they offer a similar program over at Hilton Parma. Um, so when we do incorporate tennis into our existing programs, uh, basically just a portion of the day we schedule it. So the kids get to enjoy a tennis session and they seem to always look forward to it. They always enjoy it and they're always uh, ready to, um, come back for more the next week or the next day. So it's pretty cool to see the kids enjoying a different different type of sport. Um, In-person training is also one of the awesome resources that USDA and Net Generation provide. Um, it's the training that they do, they do is just outstanding. Um, I've experienced it firsthand. I've gone through it several times, whether it be at a session with Joe um, or with our own staff here. It's just extre extremely beneficial, and your own team has the ability to deliver tennis programs utilizing the coaching and the training resources, which is, which is a great, great benefit. It provides your staff with a different and a safe activity to do with the kids, and kids, staff of all ages and abilities are introduced to a sport that otherwise they may not have had the opportunity to be exposed to. So the training is just an out outstanding part um, in resource that USTA is able to offer. And we, um, like I said, next week, we're, we are starting a partnership with Tennis Saves. Uh, tennis Saves is an organization. It focuses on just bringing tennis enthusiasts together and creates awareness and raises funds for some really worthy causes around the community. And uh, our partnership we have formed with Tennis Saves and the, basically the goal is just to provide kids in our community with opportunities to continue to play and learn the game. Uh, we're working with Jason Spears who hopefully may be on this session. He is the Tennis Saves founder and he's gonna instruct a youth tennis clinic for us uh, right at our rec center. He comes out, which is really awesome. We don't have to worry about transportation or getting the kids anywhere. Um, a lot of the kids are already going to be here, which is awesome as part of our rec day program that I talked about earlier. And Jason will be coaching and training our staff, which will be a huge asset uh, moving into the future. And hopefully the partnership will lead to future programming and play opportunities for the kids and the families in our community. So we're really grateful for the partnership and excited for it to uh, to take off and, and introduce some more kids to tennis. We're, we were able to offer it as a standalone program. And then in addition, uh, we're incorporating it into our rec day program. So it's pretty awesome. We're kind of hitting two parts of um, two sets of, of kids there. So we're pretty excited about it and, uh, and looking forward to it. 
So in, in, uh, in conclusion, you can offer tennis into any program. You can offer a separate program. The equipment is amazing. I know some of our panelists are gonna to touch on the equipment. It really helps all kids of all ages be able to play the sport and grow the game. So here at Ogden, we've, uh, we've really enjoyed partnering with USTA and, and have greatly benefited from, from all the resources. So thanks for having me and uh, look forward to hearing from our other panelists. They have some great things to share. Thank you so much, Kelly. Uh, next slide, please. So now we're gonna hear from Hassan Dajani of the Austin Inn Community Tennis Association, OCTA. Um, he works a lot with local schools. He has great things to say um, about tennis overall and his collaboration. So um, let's hear from Hassan. Thanks, Monica. Um, very happy to be here and uh, appreciate the opportunity. Um, and I think the main story I was going to try to tell today is just uh, the great partnership that we've been able to create with both the USTA, our, uh, our local uh, Parks and Rec, and, um, and local club as well. Um, <clears throat> so in, so the, the town of Ossining is in the Hudson Valley, if nobody uh, doesn't know where it is, but um, you know, we're in Westchester County and we're, you know, in a pretty affluent area of the country where, you know, a lot of kids um, have the opportunity to play tennis and take lessons. But Austin is one of those towns where there's a, you know, a good portion, if not a majority of our community who can't afford to take tennis lessons and doesn't have that privilege. And, um, you know, over the years, we've always tried to find ways to increase the participation of those people who couldn't um, afford to take lessons or didn't have the, the access to a club or something like that. Um, so uh, probably about 15 or so years ago, Shannon Ross started the Austin Community Tennis Association uh, as a nonprofit organization. So some of you may know her. Um, I believe she even worked at Eastern, uh, USTA Eastern. And, um, you know, I started off with as being an instructor for the OCTA um, many years ago. And uh, the last few years of I've kind of uh, taken taken over um, since we sadly lost Shannon a few years ago. Um, <clears throat> but uh, so so trying to you know to run whether it's adult programs or junior programs, we're always trying to find creative ways to do things um, to get kids part you know, participating um, and have them be able to afford it. And uh, uh, so working with our our local parks and rec. Um, they're, they're a great partner, as you can see in the picture, hopefully those are the, the, the courts that we use. Um, and uh, we've got four beautiful, you know, uh, clay courts with lights, as, as maybe you can see in the corners, um, which, which would be a shame to, you know, to lose. So we, we try to keep them as busy as possible. And, um, and I guess another, another piece of the story is uh, you all probably know Sandy Hoffman, who I have to give credit to about a year and a half ago. Uh, came to me and said, hey, we want to uh, try to, you know, run a junior program. And, uh, but we can't run it through, uh, through the town because the town cannot hire, a, you know, a tennis pro directly um, if they already work somewhere else, basically. And um, uh, so through a, through our partnership, we, uh, we made it work where the, the tennis association, the Austin awesome Community Tennis Association, runs the program, basically pays the tennis pro, um, and then we can pick who the, the instructors are, the pros are. So we partner with a local club, Club Fit, uh, Briarcliff, if anyone knows that club. So uh, hats off to them for stepping up and, um, and ran, a, you know, ran a program uh, last summer, which was very successful even during COVID. Uh, where we had uh, younger juniors as well as older juniors um, for a six week program. And the beauty of it was that the USTA also stepped up and provided the grant. So um, I know uh, it was mentioned already, but that was really, I think the linchpin is that, you know, as a nonprofit, we can't afford to pay instructors in, in this area what they, what they really deserve. So the USTA uh, with that grant helped us to do that. And at the same time, helped, it, helped to make the program affordable for the juniors who participated. Um, so I think it was a win, win, win all the way around. And, um, you know, even during COVID, the pros were able to make some money in addition to teaching at the club. And juniors got to participate, get out and exercise. And 
you know, the town was able to use the courts and provide something to the community. Um, we've also been able to partner um, in that, using that same kind of partnership, we've also been able to do programs within schools. So to offer tennis within PE classes, um, I say the same way that Kelly mentioned as well. Um, <clears throat> so that was, uh, that was also a success. We started with one school maybe about a year ago and then uh, we were able to expand to six schools uh, last, uh, I think it was January into March and then COVID hit and, and we had to stop doing that. So uh, I hope once the pandemic is really over that uh, you know, we can get these programs all back up and running again. Um, but, but yeah, that's, a, that's, that's the moral of my story. It's a great partnership. There's a lot of creative ways to, to get things done. And uh, thanks to the USTA and everyone who, who helped make it happen. Thanks, Hassan, for, uh, for all you do. And mentioning Shannon, I, I did have the privilege of working with Shannon, and I knew how passionate she was about um, her CTA. She talked about it all the time. So, and you've got you know big shoes to fill, and you've, you've done uh, an incredible job. And also, I can't let the Sandy reference go by either. Um, a colleague of almost uh, 20 years, Sandy, uh, retired not too long ago. Um, and yeah, so thanks for bringing up Sandy, because it always brings a smile. Uh, to my face and Shannon as well. Um, I, I saw a quick question in the chat. So, and I, something I should have mentioned before, Judy um, Carmos put that in there. And I think um, we have, I think starting with the TSRs is a great way to start. We have, uh, we're able to provide a lot of staff support to a park and rec that's looking to start a program or expand their program. So yeah, I would, I would suggest um, starting with the TSRs and then we can, um, we can loop in our colleagues, whether in competitive or marketing um, and work with that provider to, uh, to grow their program. Um, I want to give Michelle a chance to speak right now. Uh, Michelle and I have known each other for uh, for a few years. Um, she uh, is out here in Western New York as I am. And the town of Hamburg Recreation Department brought her on as the program director a few years ago. Um, they always had a good program. It became great when Michelle came on board and with all of her experience and the years she's taught um, tennis, I won't say how many years, maybe she will. Um, but I will, uh, I will say I've also had the privilege of, like I mentioned before, working with her as a clinician and not just at the Eastern section, but she did national trainings for us. Um, so we're excited to have Michelle as part of the panel and to, to hear what she has to share. Hey, Michelle. Hey, Joe. Thanks so much. Thanks, Monica. Um, I'm honored to be uh, on the panel and, and with all of the other panelists here. Um, as Joe mentioned, I've been involved with tennis for a very long time. And no, I'm not going to say how long. Um, but um, I was really excited when I was able to take all of um, the knowledge and information I gained as a clinician for USTA um, into my hometown and um, try to take a program that had a longstanding tradition and see what we could do to grow it. Um, so, you know, they had lessons. And one of the things that um, has stuck with me for many years is that um, kids like to play and kids always ask if anybody's ever done this, you know, when do I get to play? Um, and they don't go to soccer lessons, they go to soccer games. Um, so I wanted to take that idea and bring it into um, the tennis program for Hamburg. Um, so what we did is we looked at how can we incorporate all of that. Um, and one of the things was we wanted to create play based on levels. So the great thing is, of course, we've got the equipment. It's all age appropriate. Um, the children are able to utilize the rackets, the nets, the balls, the spaces, um, and they're able to play. Um, and so depending on their age, depending on their ability level, um, we have different opportunities for them to actually play with and against each other within our program. Um, so usually we try to incorporate something like this um, on a daily basis, but also at week's end. So on the slide, you'll see something called Team Challenge. If it's not something you're familiar with, basically it's a very informal form of um, 
competitive play where really there's not a whole lot of scorekeeping. The kids are placed into teams rather than individual. There's no one winner. There's no um, you know trophy at the end. The kids just get together to play with and against each other. Um, so we started incorporating that and that was at the end of the week. So at the end of every week, we have um, team play. Um, and that has been a great addition because the, the children are able to utilize the skills that we work on from Monday through Thursday. And then on Friday, they can incorporate that into play. The, the tennis staff is there so we can you know, call attention to it. Oh, remember when we worked on your surge? Remember when we worked on this? And kind of see it in a more realistic, real world situation because they're playing the game. Um, the other thing we wanted to do was um, get kids playing year round. Um, I didn't want it to be a one and done. You know, one kids once kids stop playing and they get involved in other activities, uh, we could lose them. Um, and we wanted to grow the game and um, continue and and. Um, retain our numbers and just continue to grow. So we looked at how we could um, incorporate an indoor program. We're fortunate enough to have a gymnasium uh, at our disposal to use. So we brought in um, the lessons indoors and we're in the gym. We set up the short nets. We use the foam balls because they're softer and we just kind of um, pare down a little bit what we do in the summertime. The team challenges aren't every week. We do it at the end of a session, but it's the same philosophy. So now we've got kids playing year round. Uh, we were also able to um, partner with a local club and bring the higher level older um, players um, to actually um, an indoor tennis facility where they were able to do the same thing. So again, we've got the youngest kids all the way through the oldest kids playing playing year round. And as everybody has mentioned, it was fantastic and was really starting to, um, to take off and then the pandemic hit. But the great thing is that every session we offer, even though we have to limit our numbers because of space and because of safety, we're constantly getting new people interested, new kids interested. So I can only hope that once we can open it up to everybody, uh, we'll see the, um, the growth that we were hoping. And then lastly, um, and I think Kelly mentioned this as well, that the training, um, since I was fortunate enough to, and I am fortunate enough to be a, a clinician, um, I am able to kind of just incorporate some staff training um, just in the day-to-day the -day things. So what we wanted to do was um, every week kind of help my staff who may or may not have taught tennis before, just understand a little bit about what, what our kids need because this is mostly a, a youth program. So every week we work on a different aspect. Um, we have staff meetings. So we're all on the same page. Age, um, instead of every staff member doing their own thing on their own court, we kind of are all on the same page and we're working together um, to, to build a program. And um, it's been very exciting um, to see where we've been able to take it in a short period of time. And, and I can't wait to see where it goes. So um, I'm just very fortunate to have had all the experiences I've had um, with USTA and with USTA Eastern. And um, I want to thank everybody for being here today. And hopefully we can all see each other real soon. Thank you so much, Michelle. That was great. So the next slide, if you wouldn't mind, Kristen. So we're going to hear from Tom Venero, um, the director of Parks and Rec um, of Pee Wee Tennis. Over to you, Tom. Yeah, good to see everybody again. And uh, I'll keep it brief as, uh, as the, our previous panelists really shared a lot of amazing, uh, amazing efforts that they're making with their tennis programs. And, and this is just one specific program that we, we, we would highlight. And I, I always look at these pictures, our Pee Wee programs. I wish we had a better picture. Um, so we're, we're gonna have to do better on that one. But, but either way, um, Kelly runs a similar program. We call ours Pee Wee and, and in this case, Pee Wee Tennis. And basically what we're doing is we're, we're running a tennis program, three, four weeks, whatever it may be, uh, multiple sessions for three to five-year-olds. And, and I think that, you know, with three to five-year-olds, it just doesn't seem that, at least for me on the outside, it, tennis is not that mainstream okay, we're going to put a racket in a three to five year old hand, but, but why don't we think that way? And, and perhaps we should, because we do that with everything else. And so a little background there, we've been doing peewee football, flag football, uh, baseball, floor hockey, basketball, 
So anything that you could imagine in those sports, we, we generally have been doing with those three to five-year-olds, but we hadn't been doing that with tennis. And that relationship that we've had with USTA and Joe really kind of sparked that idea that we can do this, you know, and not everybody's as fortunate. It's a great segue. Um, you know, Michelle, she's a, a kind of a tennis pro working in a park and rec field. Um, our most departments, I'm, I would assume, don't have the, the opportunity to have um, you know, somewhat of a clinician or, or, or a pro, so to speak, working for them. So, you know, other than going out and getting a, a person to go in and do your lessons uh, for three to five-year-olds, maybe you can employ some of your own staff to do that. And because of USTA's, um, their curriculum and the equipment that is appropriate for this age group, we're able to do that. And, and so we feel comfortable doing that. We wouldn't be able to do that without USTA and, and um, you know, it's just such a joy. And I think someone put a comment of watching what's better than, than little kids, you know, smiling. And these, these programs, this Pee Wee tennis program, there's, there's not a better time that you can feel that joy and that, I, I guess, just that fulfillment after you leave this program and, and how they enjoy it. So um, that's one just kind of specific example of a program and how USTA has worked to enhance our tennis offerings through, you uh, really introducing it to the younger, younger uh, individuals. And so uh, on the next slide, we're going to talk a little bit about um, not necessarily programming, but facilities. Uh, recently, we were fortunate enough to reconstruct our tennis facility at our, at our main park. So um, we have a outdoor four court facility. It was in, in rough shape. Um, I do believe actually, we, so because it was in rough shape, we actually were fortunate enough to have in our capital planning to reconstruct the court. Um, so we didn't necessarily need the assistance, but I do believe, and, and Joe, you can probably add to this afterwards, uh, USTA does offer a facility assistance grant where you can actually get a, a good chunk of funding if you were looking to reconstruct or put in a, a new tennis facility, um, wherever it is that you are. Uh, but in our case, we went through with the reconstruction and what USTA did for us in a kind of a smaller scale, but a very helpful scale is offered a blended lines grant. So as you can see in, in the photo here, you're basically looking at a court that, uh, that has multiple sets of lines that will allow us to kind of basically split up that court based on the age levels. So, you know, I, and I, I'm not an expert on the lengths and the dimensions. I could let Joe to speak to that, but, you know, for any kind of age level, we wanted to put the small, the, the, the really young ones out there, we could actually divide a couple of the courts into two courts um, and kind of go, I guess, perpendicular to um, to the baselines and, and actually make two courts out of one for the smaller kids. And then as you go up and gradually get to the older kids, there's a, another option for a smaller court within the largest court. So this is one initiative that USDA helped us with at the end of our project and fully funded putting in these blended lines. Thanks, Tom. Uh, yeah, I'll just a quick follow up on the facility services piece. Um, unfortunately, the grants, we don't have the grants in place for 2021, but we do still have facility assistance, uh, technical assistance. Uh, there's a facility consulting service that National has started this year that I know a bunch of our uh, providers have signed up for. So there is still a, a USDA facility services program and National facility consultants who are ready to help. Um, but unfortunately, the budget cuts have forced us to, uh, to take out the lines, but or take out the line grants and the um, and the other grants at least for now. But and one last point on the lines as well. Um, yeah, when going kind of. Uh, <laughs> As a point, not, we're not playing the full 78 foot court, we go the 36 foot courts. Um, sometimes depending on the space between the baseline and the fence, you can even get three 36 foot courts running. Um, I guess that would be parallel to the net. I don't know if my, I'm not a math major, but we can get three on either side. So we can get a lot of kids playing at the same time. Obviously right now with the, with the pandemic and social distancing, we might only want to do two, like Tom was saying, um, which is, leads to a question that um, I do want to throw out to the panel. Um, and anyone's welcome to uh, to hop in and uh, and take this question. Um, but the question is: Explain. We we love to hear what you've done to ensure the safety of staff, instructors, and participants um, since the pandemic began. I know everybody has done some form of programming um, over the last ten months, and uh, obviously a lot of things have changed. Um, and you guys have all delivered great programs. So if you could just uh, kind of share on that and 
just give us some uh, some specifics regarding what you did on the safety space. And like I said, I, whoever wants to jump in, feel free. I mean, I'm on, I'm unmuted right now, so I'll continue sure. and then and then maybe let someone else jump in. But you know, we've had a lot of success in in, in keeping at least you know, it knock on wood, keeping our participants safe and um, lessening the exposure. And and part of that is absolutely our state guidelines. Uh, New York State, you know, I think did a wonderful job of putting out guidelines for us to follow. You know, some some people may even say it was overkill. You know, there was a, a lot of guidelines put in place and. Um, and I think what we ended up doing was taking it to a whole nother level. And so when it came to, of course, the distancing, right? Well, there's many opportunities to distance uh, in, in tennis, as we've already discussed. Um, fair enough. And then we, you know, obviously the, the, the equipment. And so that was a big part of this at the early goings on. And, and how, how does it a, a transmit through a tennis ball or through a racket? And so you know, so we've done our best to make sure that all of our participants in, in programs like this, not just tennis, um, have access to their own equipment. And so it, minimizing is, is minimizing the shared equipment as much as possible and creating an, op an opportunity for us to be able to sanitize, but also, again, allow people to utilize their own equipment when possible. So um, I think that's, you know, probably the, the, the main ways that we've been able to ensure the safety. Yeah, that's a great point about um, obviously not looking to share equipment right now and being able to provide equipment for uh, for all the participants. I know um, from my kids actually participating in the Town of Hamburg program that the kids wore masks until they got on the court as well. And um, I know, Michelle, you can speak more to this perhaps, but also provided a bit of a buffer between uh, sessions, uh, long a longer time between sessions than you'd had in the past. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. We um, we separated our lesson time by 15, 20 minutes um, to give the, the one class enough time to leave before the next class was coming in, thereby not as many people converging at the same time. Um, the kids wore masks onto the court. They put their masks in baggies because we were outside. We felt like we could keep them apart and it was safe for them not to have their masks on. I'd prefer that they didn't wear masks playing tennis um, anyway. Um, and then at the end of the lesson, they got hand sanitizer and they got their masks back. Um, you know, we weren't high-fiving, we weren't hugging, we weren't, you know, of the things that we're so used to doing, you have to constantly kind of keep in the back of your mind. Um, but um, everything I did, we did, I, I felt really um, ensured the safety and we didn't have any issues through the, all of our programming. Awesome. And uh, thank you guys. I, we're going to wrap up, but I just want to, again, thank um, our panelists. You guys were great. Really appreciate you taking the time to be a part of this and to share uh, your stories. Um, I just want to thank Kristen uh, for driving our deck here and Monica, my co-presenter, co-host as well. Um, and Monica is going to wrap us up, but thanks, everybody. Yeah, thank you, everyone, so much for, for presenting um, our speakers. You were wonderful for everyone who was able to stay and listen on. Thank you so much. Um, just a couple quick housekeeping things. Um, should you want to continue this conversation, and we really hope that you do, uh, there's a networking tab if you go to that link on the screen there. Um, and there's a, a separate conversation thread about parks specifically, but please have conversations with your colleagues about how, um, you know, you hope to get entry level play started in your area. Also, just a really quick promotion of our award ceremony. It's happening this Friday at 615. It's actually going to be on our Facebook page. Um, you don't have to be on Facebook to receive um, access to the to video. We're gonna be sharing information about that over email in the next couple of days. Um, also, if you want to attend other sessions that you haven't registered for, that is fine. Um, if you go to that same link there, you should see that you have access now to every session um, that is open to registrants. So that is it. We will be sharing um, this recording, this presentation, um, a brief survey in, in the coming weeks. So look out for that from us and thanks everyone again.